Holy Spirit, help us to understand Scripture. Give us the endurance to stick with it, to make sense of it, and finally break through to understanding. And pull down the barriers of language, which can have a tendency to separate us in the written and spoken word that we have with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as you heard me just pray now, language is so very important to us. Words can communicate how we are feeling, what we are thinking, and they describe and explain. As Sally said earlier, today is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday in Pentecost. I've always remembered Christ the King Sunday as one of those bookends to Pentecost. <laughs> but what is Christ the King Sunday? I'm going to use my words and language to try and explain it to you. Some of us can be quite successful in our language. We have a very robust vocabulary. Then there are others that struggle a bit to fully get their ideas and thoughts about something written down and adequately explained. An idea, thought, or a concept. I oftentimes feel I fall into that category. If this is you, it's okay. I feel you. <laughs> and I'm right there with you. But still, go ahead and give it a try. So let's try and understand our Colossians lesson today. So what is Christ the King Sunday? As Frank Crouch explains it, and he's an instructor at uh, Moravian the uh, Theology or Seminary here in the U.S. He says, liturgically speaking, it is a day that magnifies the otherness of Christ, reminding us of who has the final say in our lives. It is also a day to remember who God is in Jesus, right as we are beginning to prepare and celebrate his coming into the manger. It is about the work Christ did, his humanity, and to reconcile us to himself that we celebrate his kingship. So let's take a closer look at our Colossians lesson for today. It says, May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. He is the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. Now verse 15 says, He is the image of the invisible God. We may not see God, but what the author of Colossians wants us to know is when we look to his son, Jesus, 
We see the God who cannot be seen. Verse 15 tells us Jesus was the firstborn of all creation. Verse 19 says all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in him, Jesus. And verse 13 says, he has rescued us from the powers of darkness. Okay, so this is why we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. But if you are anything like me, this may still not quite connect head to heart. And that connection on a theological level. There's a lot of theology in this passage. <laughs> the words of the NRSV use the words of the NRSV uses sometimes may not be adequate enough to break through those tough concepts and ideas and paint that perfect picture. I have a friend whose favorite passage in the entire Bible. Is this a point of lesson for today? In Colossians, I thought, lady, what are you talking about? This is a real struggle for me to get my mind wrapped around all this. But then it's not the NRSV version that she uses. And that's our tradition here in the Episcopal Church. You know, we use the NRSV. And it's not the New King James. It's not even the NIV. It's the message that she reads from that is her favorite. So I'm going to pass this out to you guys. And we're going to reread it again. Now, take it if you want, or just close your eyes. As you listen to me, read it. And let's see if this version maybe paints a little better picture of this Colossians lesson. Here we go. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. Not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the understanding and spills over into joy. Thanking the Father who has made us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. God rescued us from the dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. He set us up in the kingdom of the Son he loves so much. The Son who got us out of the pit we were in, got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. We look at this sun, and we see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun, and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, Everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning, and leading the resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. 
From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive that everything of God finds its purpose, finds its proper place in him without crowning. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe people and things, animals and atoms, yet properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies. All because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. For me, verses 18 to 20 drive home that point about Christ the King. The language the message uses helps me to understand the importance of this day and why we would be celebrating it. It is in language that we communicate with each other, whether it be in the spoken or written format. If you are struggling to understand a difficult concept in the Bible, don't be dismayed. I struggle too. But dig in. Take it verse by verse, and maybe check out a different translation to see if you might be able to glean any additional knowledge or understanding. You can find tools online to help you in this endeavor. My favorite is BibleGateway.com. You can select your verses and then select the various translations you'd like to see it brought up for you. This is always my first go-to when I want to compare translations and try and get maybe a deeper understanding of what's being said. There are 60 different translations at that website. <laughs> the other place I go to is textweek.com. This will show me what the various faith traditions are reading at me, their translation, in which they use and then there are some commentaries that I can read about the specific passages, which can help me understand. Finally, the last place I will go to is our call it. Sometimes that will give a succinct summary about the overarching theme of that day. Not always, but sometimes. And it can be very, very helpful. Like we heard Sally just read a little while ago. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the people of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be free and brought together under his most gracious rule. I hope today you have found a little bit of understanding of what Christ the King Sunday is about. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the work Christ did on the cross for us, using his humanity to reconcile us to himself. Thank you that everything of God finds its proper place in Jesus. All the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people, things, animals, and atoms, all get properly fixed and fit together. All because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. In Jesus' name.